behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Please turn with me now to the New Testament and we're continuing to read Matthew's catalogue of some of the miracles and mighty works Jesus did which show that he is indeed King of the Jews. One of the things that stands out in this catalogue is that the statements that Matthew brings to us are a little bit briefer than we find in the other Gospels. Mark's Gospel and particularly Luke's Gospel has a greater focus on the personal story of the people. Luke presents Jesus as the Son of Man, whereas here we have more a court record, a concise statement of the things that Jesus did, as uh, Matthew, who has the more legal mind, uh, records them for us. Well, here we have the ninth and tenth miracles in this catalogue, reading from verse 18 of chapter 9. While Jesus spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment... I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in, and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all that land. And may the Lord bless his word to us. In uh, shortening this story, we find the ruler coming immediately to Jesus with with the statement, My daughter has died. Now Luke tells us that at the time he came, His daughter was not in fact dead, but the report came later. Another interpretation of that was that she was indeed dead when the ruler came, but he said that she was sick, having this faith in Jesus to restore the daughter. But the unbeliever came and said, no, she's dead. The one who didn't believe in Jesus emphasised the fact that she was dead. What we have, though, is... The ruler, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, so he was a leader in the community and a man who loved and feared God, who came to Jesus and worshipped him. Now, this was one end of uh, a spectrum, and the other end of the spectrum was this woman who had a flow of blood. She was unclean. She would not be allowed to enter into the temple precincts to worship the Lord. And so she was shut out from approaching God but she was able to approach the Lord Jesus and she believed in her heart that if she just touched the hem of his garment she would be made well she had heard stories of the power that Jesus had and she believed those stories and as she put herself into that position she understood that if she just touched the garment she would be well Well, it happened that way. She touched his garment and was made well. Matthew doesn't spell that out either. He uh, presumes that with Jesus turning around and seeing her, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. Now, the point is that he has affirmed what the woman has done. She hasn't stolen that healing by just sneaking up and touching the garment and sneaking away. But he has uh, come to her, your faith has made you well. So he has affirmed what she has done. 
in a very public way. And of course she goes home well. But back to this ruler, this has interrupted the process of the ruler getting attention from Jesus. Sometimes we can get panicky because of issues of time. But God is the creator of time. And he has all the time he needs and wants for the purposes that he has in mind. And so we should not be panicky about time, but we should do what we can when we can and leave the rest with him. So they came to the ruler's house. And the girl was indeed dead. The mourners were in, the people playing mournful music and uh, the noisy crowd wailing. That was appropriate for them to make a fuss. The ruler was a significant person in the community and his daughter was dead. And so there was uh, quite a serious funeral beginning to happen. But Jesus said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. He knows, though he has not seen the patient, he knows that God has a purpose here to show that as King of kings and Lord of lords, not only can he control the weather, not only can he heal sickness, and not only can he make the unclean clean, not only can he drive out evil spirits, but he can raise the dead. This is something that very few, even of the Old Testament prophets, were able to do. But Jesus has that authority, and there are several occasions where he does it. This is a girl who is recently dead, but she is dead. Everyone knows that. And so they laugh at him. Big contrast to the faith that this other woman had had. They have no faith in Jesus. They all knew who he was, but they had no faith that he could raise the dead. Now maybe that intervention along the way of that other woman who had the flow of blood was there simply to encourage the ruler as he looked and he knew his daughter was dead but as he saw Jesus work another miracle his hope in Jesus would be strengthened. So they put the crowd out. Jesus takes her by the hand and speaks with her as the other Gospels tell us, and the girl arose. So Jesus has authority. He has authority over sickness. He has authority over the creation. He has authority to forgive sins. He has authority to raise the dead. And the next great thing he will do in this world will be to raise the dead in Christ, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up in clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I hope you're in that company because you have acknowledged and received and believed in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour. These stories of what Jesus did, how can we apply them to us? We'd like to think that if we get sick or we're dying, we can call on the Lord Jesus and he will make us well. Many people plead with the Lord on their own behalf or on behalf of others, and not all of them are healed and rarely are the dead revived. Christians all die, and their resurrection, we're told, is a future event, not now. It is appointed under men once to die. And many people are sick with long-term sicknesses. They love the Lord Jesus, they pray, they rely on Him, but they still do not get better. There's another way of looking at this. Jesus is first of all showing he had the power as a man to do these things and he did them. And so we recognise he is different from us. It is our selfish thoughts which think we should not have health issues or anything else. But in the world these troubles are there. When the Pharisees had quizzed Jesus about his action back in verse 12, he'd said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus is actually telling us how we should live. People have needs all around us. And just as Jesus met the needs of those around in mercy, his religion was not religious deeds, fasting and praying, it was practical help to people who had need and to call sinners to repentance. And that is what we are called to do. 
we are called to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, serving them as we are able and declaring to them the gospel.